Congress for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 25 August 2014 Town of Hampton Selectman's meeting. The first pleasure this evening is for Mrs. Ellen D. Gaithel on the 31st of July. Mr. Welsh, the town manager, sent Mrs. Gaithel a letter. It is with pleasure and on behalf of the Town of Hampton's Board of Selectmen that I cordially invite you to attend their meeting on 25 August 2014 at 7 p.m. where the Board of Selectmen will honor you and recognize your service to the Town of Hampton. Ellen, could you please come forward and select and bridle? He's got your resolution and recognition of service to present. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. Hi, Ellen. Thank you. Before I read this, I got a few other little things I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've known Ellen for probably, <laughs> I'm not going to say. All right, I won't say. But we've done a lot together over the years. We. Uh, we actually, both of our kids went through Boy Scouts and both became Eagle Scouts. And if you know anything about being a parent of an Eagle Scout, they don't get that without the help of a lot of parents. Yeah. And so Ellen was very instrumental in a lot of kids in Hampton that, that got the Eagle through Troop 177. She, uh, she was on the committee for so many years. <laughs> and I was right there with her a lot of the time. So, uh, and I got a couple other things. Uh, Ellen was a member of the Hampton Budget Committee from 1985 to 1987. She was a member of the Conservation Commission from 1981 to 1983, and then 1995 to 2014. She was chair of the Conservation, Conservation Commission from 2003 to 2009. Ellen, with the help of the town's original wetlands, helped write the original wetlands ordinance. She led the effort to fund and place conservation easement on the herd farm Hampton's last working dairy farm in 2004. She led to the effort to have Hampton's salt marsh complex designated as a prime wetland. As a chair, she led the effort to purchase the ice pond for conservation and recreational purchase, uh, purpose in 2007. She was voted the Conservationist of the Year by the Coastal Conservation Association in 2009. She owns and operates Explore the Ocean World, through which since 1984 she has been giving educational talks to schools all over northern New England about the oceans and their aquatic life. And I'm sure most of your kids have had her go to the school. She brings her touch tanks in <laughs> and gives the kids the opportunity to have um, get right up close and personal with, with some of our sea creatures. Through Explore the Ocean World, Ellen operates a seasonal oceanarium at Hampton Beach. Ellen is a member of the New Hampshire Marine Coalition. She has worked for the Northeast Seafood Coalition since its inception. Ellen has served on the Board of Directors of the Coastal Conservation Association and was appointed to the Marine Protected Area Federal Advisory Committee in 2008, having been nominated by Sen then Senator Judd Gregg and John Sununu. She serves as an advisor to the Atlantic Coastal Cooperative Statistics Association and the Board of Directors of the New Hampton Fisheries Section. She is appointed to the New England Fishery Management Council in August of 2013. She and her husband David received the Visionary Award for the Gulf of Maine Council on the Maine Environment of Marine Environment in 2014. Giving the award, she has stated that the Gaithels have dedicated their lives to protecting the fisheries and other valuable marine resources in the Gulf of Maine. So with that, mouthful. <laughs> Whereas Ellen Gaithel served the people of Hampton the town of Hampton, with dedicated and loyalty member of the Hampton Budget Committee for two years, and as a member of the Conservation Commission for 21 years, where she served as the chair for six years. Whereas Ellen Gaithel served with distinction, providing guidance and leadership during her tenure as a faithful appointed official. As a member of the Conservation Commission, Ellen helped write the town's original wetland ordinance, 
with the chair and was the chair of the Conservation Commission. She led in the efforts to place in conservation easement on the herd farm, in the town's last working dairy farm, and to purchase the ice pond for conservation and recreation purpose, and to have the salt marsh complex designated as prime wetlands. Whereas Ellen Gaithel served the town of Hampton above and beyond the call of duty on many occasions with personal sacrifice. Be it resolved that the selectmen and the citizens of the town of Hampton make known their appreciation to the service of Ellen D. Gaithel has rendered in the town of Hampton. Whereunto the set into our seal the 25th day of August in the year of our Lord 2014 and the 376th year of the founding of Hampton in the 334th year of the founding of the state of New Hampshire, and the 238th year of the independence of the United States of America. Signed by the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Um, I would just like to say that was very embarrassing. Um, and uh, my mother always taught me that you, if you're going to complain, you better be willing to make it, make things right. And that's the what I have lived by. And I hope that I'm leaving my uh, offices in the town um, and my work that I've done here in a better state than when I started. I just need to make one correction. The person who was really instrumental in obtaining the herd farm was Vivian Marcotte. Mm -hmm. She put a great deal of work into it and I, I want to thank her for all of her leadership also. And for Jay who has taken over and I'm sure he's going to be doing a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing her with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to deviate uh, due to the loss um, last week of uh, Wanda Robertson, uh, town assistant attorney. And Mark, would you please grab the podium uh, and offer your words and lead us in a moment of silence for Wanda? Do we do that first? Yeah, what, whatever you prefer, sir. Well, let's uh, have a moment of silence, if we can, for Wanda Roberts. And as I understand, also, Mr. Chairman, another town employee. Yes, sir. Well, let's talk about Wanda right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For most of last week, those of us who work in this building and elsewhere in town have struggled to understand the reason for the sudden and unexpected death in her sleep of a healthy Wanda Robertson at the age of 50. Now we know that she died of a brain aneurysm and Wanda would not have suffered for long. From 12 years of working here, however, we do not have to struggle to understand all that she stood for. First, she was a pillar of strong support for her husband and two children, 23 and 26, and uh, her t their two boxers. Her office bulletin board was a constant reminder of their special presence in her life. And what a brave, great job her children did last Thursday greeting all who came to the funeral home for a last visit in the absence of their hospitalized father. Second, Wanda stood for the fact that education does not need to end if you do not finish college in your late teens and early twenties. In 1999, at the age of 35, Wanda got her paralegal certificate with honors from McIntosh College and was on the dean's list every semester. In 2002, at the age of 38, she received her Bachelor of Arts degree with honors from the University of Southern Maine. And after starting as a paralegal with us in January 2003, Wanda attended law school part-time for four years, and in 2008, at the age of 44, she received her law degree, fulfilling a dream, a long-held dream. 
She then passed two very difficult bar exams, the Mass Bar in 2010 at the age of 46 and the New Hampshire Bar in 2011 at the age of 47. And then she became the assistant town attorney. Wanda stood for loyalty. People wondered if, after she got her law degree, she would simply go elsewhere. Six years later, we know the answer. She was making great strides in her dual career as assistant town attorney and human resources coordinator, and she was bringing great value to the town. Uh, over 110 contracts and invitations to bid have been reviewed by our department in the last few years, mostly by Wanda. And lately, Wanda has won some significant court victories for the town in planning and zoning matters. As assistant town attorney, she saved the town real money, at least $100,000 from not having to use outside counsel as much in labor matters at her rate, which was far below what outside counsel would cost. But Wanda's life here was much more than these metrics. She stood for a goodness of spirit. And if good human relations are the foundation for a good human resources person, Wanda personified this in spades. Words others have used to describe Wanda in the last week are caring, cheerful, a warm spirit, enthusiasm, sense of humor, kindness, a delight to work with, a real team player, spirit of cooperation, sensitivity, valuable community member, wonderful person. Wanda's life here touched so many. I am honored to say I was her mentor and friend. In 12 years of working together, there was never a cross word that passed between us. Large law firms have been known to spend thousands of dollars studying internal personnel problems only to be told that people should say good morning to one another and thank you for a job well done. This was never a problem with Wanda around. For every day of 12 great years, Wanda, good morning, good night, thank you, goodbye, and God bless. Thank you, Mark. We'll move on with the agenda now. Uh, Roman 2 is a public hearing, RSA 674-40, small alpha, delegation of authority to accept dedicated streets, 1 Bradford Road, Elliott Street, Jeunesse Street, Janvin Road, Hedman Avenue, and Randall Street. We'll open this up for public comment. And seeing none, Attorney Geraldo, are you here to address this issue? Um, a question uh, was last asked time. These were on the agenda, Mr. Chairman. A good question as to whether or not the authority that was given to the selectmen by the uh, state law and then uh, granted by the town meeting uh, could be used to um, accept town roads that uh, were approved by the planning board prior to the statute coming into being in 1993. I believe the answer is yes, but also that uh, this authority should, ex should be utilized by the board only for those roads which have been uh, dedicated to public use by virtue of planning board approval. And so this time around you have uh, uh, six of the seven streets that were noticed last time. Uh, for the remaining street, Park Avenue, I recommend that the uh, if that is going to be accepted, that it be through town meeting vote at town meeting. Thank you. Uh, for the record, please note that the uh, public meeting commenced at 1914 for the time. Uh, any Board of Selectmen comment? A motion? Just one quick comment. I believe this was Fred Shockey's development. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The six roads, I understand, yeah. are all in that about development. about 10 years yeah. for the whole development yeah. to come to fruition. Yeah. Okay, a motion to accept. I'll make a motion we accept the uh, so, so named streets. A second mm -hmm. by Selectman Waddell. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
And we will close that meeting at 1915. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well done. Good night. We'll now move to Roman 3, the public comment period. <coughs> Please approach the podium and identify yourself. Thank you, sir. Norman Silberdick, 70 Todd Mill Road. Uh, I have three items that I'd like to discuss. The first one relates to, uh, under new business, the waiver request on the Eaton Park ball field lights as uh, there's, there's only one bidder on this project which was approved five months ago and for $80,000 to uh, for the lighting system and apparently there was one bidder uh, and one system pre-approved the Musco green generation lighting system and the way the bid went out, if someone's going to propose an alternative bid, they would have had three days to get the bid, address the issues, and get it to the town. It just seems to me that we're going back to some, what I would consider bad business practices by having one bidder. So I went online today and I looked up um, ball field lighting contractors. Maybe there are more than just one existing. And my God, there are quite a few out there in New England, in New Hampshire, in Massachusetts, etc., who could bid on this. I'm not sure if we approach them or how the, the process works or it has to be you send a, a bid notice out or someone has to come to you, but it just seems to me we're rushing on something and the selectmen should um, delay this and make sure that we get proper alternative bids on this. This is, this is to me not exactly a critical item but it's very important that we not you know that we do have a fair practice of for purchasing the second item on my list was at one of the prior meetings there was a discussion about the New Hampshire Municipal Association legislative policy recommendations and uh, I believe there was supposed to be emails sent to the to the uh, town manager which and there's been no further word on it and I guess that the time period for comments from the selectmen has come and gone uh, because I think there was a time limit on it as I understand it and there were a couple of items that would have affected the taxpayers of Hampton and uh, I'm sorry to see that that happened because I think there should have been a thorough airing of what your thoughts were regarding uh, the potential uh, legislation whether you're up or down for it and my final item was I had a chance to look at the proposed warrant articles that haven't been reviewed by you yet but they're coming out for spending and I just hope that there is significant amount of due diligence and financial justification because there is a substantial amount of spending and for our group when we watch all this for rational taxpayers of Hampton we want to make sure those things that will support or we won't support have a thorough and complete airing thank you very much thank you sir any further public comment and I, I will say for the, the audience, uh, there was a revised agenda. There was um, uh, perhaps a telephone call to uh, Mr. McGuire. Are you in the audience this evening? Yes. And your, your comments, sir, will be uh, up here at the, the podium and come under public comment with four minutes. Please take your time. Thank you, sir. And the board has received as yes. part of their packet. Okay. Um, closures. Thank I'd you, I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to speak tonight this all started with a verbal confrontation that I had had with a, a driver as he was driving by 3012 Farm Road where I live um, we have a problem there with speeding coming up the hill the S curve everyone tries to get a little head start before they make it up the hill and I stood out there and timed some of the cars it takes less than four or five seconds from the time they come around the corner till they're in front of our driveway we're in a 55 plus community. We have several drivers that are in their late 70s and some even in their 80s. Many of them women. And every one of them that I have spoken to in all 14 of our units have signed this complaint. Every one of them has had some type of a, an altercation, either people blowing their horn at them and doing several other things. Uh, just coming over here tonight, there were two trucks going by, one coming down the hill 
who was going much faster, and there's a post at 20 mile per hour there that no one listens to. Um, he was going at least 50 miles an hour, and there was another one coming up the hill. I, I just foresee a bigger problem happening when they open up the restaurant at the Smutty Nose Brewery. And what do people go to a brewery for but to try beer and drink? And uh, I would just hope that either with flashing lights or something to make them slow down. When I had the f confrontation with the man coming up the hill, he tried to tell me that the speed limit was 40. No one even knows what the speed limit is around there. It's supposed to be a... It's posted 30 a little further, but it's posted 20 on both sides of the roads just before our driveway and just before the pond. Um, before something really does happen, it's one of us does get hurt, I would hope that the town would at least look into uh, blinking lights there or something to slow the people down. After the confrontation, they did have a, an officer come down and stand there with me. And he was there for about 15 or 20 minutes, and he said to me, I don't think I've seen one car going less than 35 miles an hour. And as soon as they came over the hill and they saw the cop, they all, you could see the front end slow right down. But if no one's there, they just scream down that hill. And uh, I'm hoping that no, none of us get hurt or no one else gets hurt. And I would hope that we'd try and do something with the traffic situation. Because that S curve in the in the window, when there's snow on the ground, is going to be a, an awful place with 18 wheel trucks going up and down that road all day long. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you, Mr. McGuire. Any further public comment this evening? And seeing none. We'll go to announcements in community calendar. Selectman Woolsey. I can't think of anything that I need to communicate okay. at this point in time. Thank you, ma'am. School's open tomorrow. Ah. Let's make sure everybody, as we just heard, drives carefully out there. There's going to be buses on the road. There's going to be, um, you know, kids out in the street. So just be careful. Good point. <clears throat> Wonderful. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I agree with Rusty. School starting tomorrow. Please, please be careful. Also, uh, the, the summer's coming to an end, and I think the lifeguards down at the beach have done a phenomenal job this year. They won that competition. Uh, men were won first place, women were second place, and they were first place overall. I think that's cute. super, super job down there. So I think that's great. And I, I also would just like to condolences to the family of James Foley, the yes. journalist over uh, yes. Rochester Roger, from Rochester yeah thank you sir uh, I do have one uh, at 1555 uh, Deputy Chief Sawyer emailed uh, both the town manager and I and uh, of course uh, this is a great town uh, and the Hampton police like all others uh, don't forget those that served with them and served us uh, Deputy Chief Sawyer uh, sends gentlemen uh, subject William Keene we regret to inform you that a longtime resident and former Hampton police officer passed last <coughs> evening. William Francis Keene, age 80, resided at 12 Keene Lane in Hampton. Bill served with the Hampton Police Department from 1960 until 1991 as a special officer and also served as a full-time officer from 1965 to 1966. Bill was well known throughout Rockingham County as an accomplished <coughs> firearms instructor and assisted with the training at the Rockingham County Police Training Academy in the late 1960s. Bill went on to federal service as a Sky Marshal in the early 1970s and later joined the ranks of the U.S. Customs Service. Our prayers and thoughts with the Keene family in the memory of uh, that valiant public servant. And thank you, Chief Sawyer, for sending that information. Mr. Welsh, do you have any public or community no, announcements? Thank you, sir. Did we ask? for a letter from the board to be sent to the King family? Yes, ma'am. Roman 4, uh, excuse me, Roman 5, the consent agenda. A motion, please. I'll make that motion. A second? Sure. Second. Okay, and uh, Select and Bridal, would you please uh, uh, give us a synopsis and read those? <coughs> okay, the use of town property, the Hands Art Network in Morelli Square on 925. Committee appointment, Conservation Commission, I'll Alternate Dan O'Connor. 
Island Path Road Closure and 6 Ballard Ave Ballad Road Sewer Permit Extension Request. Seafood Festival Sidewalk Vendors, the Cafe Can Cafe, the Cows, <laughs> the, <laughs> what the Express Ink. You don't have to not name them all. Okay. There's too many. Uh, there are a lot of them. I'll just leave it at that. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Hampton Cemetery deed to John Callanan. Thank so. you, sir. Uh, barring any further comment, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank Five. you. Five. <laughs> we'll move into Roman six. Uh, appointments number one, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor. 2014 MS1, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I did uh, present to you this year's uh, MS1 for your review and uh, hopefully pr approval this evening. Um, the 2014 uh, taxable value um, has been determined to be $2,781,983,500. Um, that's an increase of Thirty million forty nine thousand six hundred dollars, so one point one percent above the two thousand and thirteen taxable value. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask me, uh, I can answer that now for you. Thank you, sir. Select the motion. No, thank you for the information. Uh, Ed, very nice job. Select the group. Select the All set. Thank you. All set. And do we need a motion, or is this just a uh, signature document for us? Signature. And will that be signed this evening, or will that be tomorrow? Um, if you sign it this evening, I believe you should have it. Okay, do we have that hard copy? I have your original. I got a copy. Um, well, so actually, the copy's fine, because it, it electronically gets sent. I just send the, the signature pages just separately. Just pass it right over. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll sign that, if okay. barring anything else. And Mr. Welch will uh, have that fourth document for you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. One off Fred's death. <laughs> Roman 6 appointments number 2 Christy Pulliam finance director Alpha monthly report July 2014 yes ma'am good evening good, good evening. evening all right I am here to present the um, financial reports for the month ending July 31st this is the seventh month, uh, so the expenditure target is 58.3%. The month's total income was 729000 Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 254000 This is This now puts motor vehicles 199000 above the budget, or plus 7.47% for the year. The other major contributors to the month's total were building permits at 47000 parking lots at 180000 Highway subsidy at eighty thousand, rice sewer billing at twenty one thousand, departmental income at sixty four thousand, and real estate trust at seventy two thousand. Uh, the expense summary: at the end of July, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were were sixty point seven three percent of the budget, which is higher by five hundred fifty five thousand than the month's target of fifty eight point three percent. In July, the annual payment for the liability slash general insurance was made, along with the second of the semi-annual payments for workers' comp and the hydrants. These combined together account for, for 533000 of the 559 that were over budget. Um, the remainder can be found in the water and electric accounts across the budget. The majority of the departments are below the target level and don't have any major issues. Please note that we are now reporting on the summer months, which are the busiest time of year for the three larger departments in the town. Um, on page two in finance, the postage account continues to run ahead of the budget at 88.9%. And another account in that section that continues to run ahead at 83.53 is the registry of deeds. In management information services, the four equipment related accounts are easiest to report on as a whole. That's what we've been doing um, throughout the year. Uh, these four accounts have a combined budget of 81000 and through July they are at 55.2% for those four accounts. In per personnel administration is now within the target budget at 58.29%. In 
and under municipal insurance, the workers' comp second half of the year and property liability yearly payments were made in June, which is putting this group of accounts over the target at 67.3. But they're paid for the year now, so it all will balance out when, the, um, when we get further into the year. The police department is at 54.59 overall uh, when you include the open POs. Two accounts and support services, part-time special officers, and summer coverage have a combined budget of 395000 and they're currently at 181000 being expended to date, which accounts for 48000 of the department's favorable variance. The fire department is at 55.88 overall with the open POs. The four fire suppression OT accounts are at 50.6% of the annual budget, but as you as we are getting starting to see this favorable position is shrinking as we go through the summer season. Um, highways is, and streets is now within the target at 56.78%. Municipal sanitation is running slightly above its target when the open uh, portion of the annual PO for chemicals is included in the calculation, which is $93,000. Maintenance of parks is over target at 66%, which is to be expected since we are closing in on the end of the summer season for them. I mean, they've done the majority of their works in the fields and stuff. Warren articles passed at the town meeting. Uh, the cost of the fourth of the nine months relating to the c CBAs has been in booked. Um, the 2013 encumbrance are showing 68% have been expended to date. The majority of the remaining 120,000 consist of the I and I study mm -hmm. at 12,000, the codification project at 20,000, and engineering related to uh, Exeter and the high, uh, high slash high in Lafayette roads at 64,000. Mm -hmm. um, then when you get to the special revenue funds, the recreation, the beach sticker donations year to date equals 11,000 with 26,000 of these dollars being granted as scholarships this year for summer camp and other camps. The balance in the scholarships is just under 15,000 now. The cable committee uh, current fund balance remaining has dropped to just under last year's Indian total. I think since then, though, we did get um, the franchise fees just last week, I believe. So now they'll be back up over. And private detailed activity level has started to increase due to the time of the year and the better weather. So that is what I had for you this evening. And so if there's any questions. Thank you, Director. Selectman Wilson. You know my question. Did you have a chance to take a look at the sewer buy-in? I did, and it hasn't increased since the last time I was here, but I do have the number still in case oh, okay. if we didn't it remember it. It's um, $31,122. Oh, gee whiz. I thought we'd have more people buying. Yeah, and I just asked Katie today um, because she's the accounts receivable, and she's been keeping track of them, and, and I knew someone would ask, so I asked her, <laughs> and I said, hey, that's the same report you gave me last month. <laughs> So she went back and looked, and it hasn't increased. Well, I will continue to be hopeful. Okay. Thank and I'll continue you. to bring it with me. <laughs> <laughs> nice report, Christy. Yeah. Thank you. Select me, Griffin. No, thank you. As always, Christy, you do excellent work. Thank you. Excellent. The, the, uh, when you were talking about the, the liability and general insurance, is yeah. it, that's because the payment was made? Yeah, we made our second. We make a actually, we only make an annual payment on that, and so we made the payment for the year. Okay. So the one payment was made. So in the end, that'll... Yeah, those two should balance out that section is our hope. Okay. You never know with insurances and stuff, but that should, even though it's over the budget or over the target, at the end of the month, or at the end of the year, I mean, it should all uh, okay. hopefully balance out. Okay. We're all done paying those three, but, well, the hydrants, we mm -hmm. all know are over budget, yep. and that's the way they'll remain. Um, but the property liability and the workers' comp are the other two big ones, and they have been paid um, in full for the year. So. Okay. And everything else looks... Looks good? Yep. It looks okay. good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Director, thank you very much. Yeah. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. Roman 6 appointments 3. Henry Boyd, Millennium Engineering. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Proposed street name for 376 Winnicott Road, subdivision, and new fire hydrants. The floor is yours. How are you? Um, very efficient. Very impressive. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, uh, Susan Scott has an application before the Planning Board for a 10-lot subdivision. Mm -hmm. um, we have yeah. been through the PRC, which uh, seems to be working pretty well and, and uh, is bringing efficiency to the Planning Board and how those things are done, which is impressive as well. 
Uh, the fire chief, the fire protection officer, has reviewed the plans. Um, there is an existing hydrant, as you may or may not know, um, just to the right-hand side. I know, Rusty, you do. Uh, just to the right-hand side of the Scott property on the frontage of Winnicunit um, Road. And we are proposing uh, a new hydrant uh, about halfway down the street. And as I said, it's been through the PRC and, and had favorable review from the fire department. Uh, the other item is a street name. Um, so that list was sent uh, very kindly by Christina. Um, there is no objection, obviously, to any of the names on it, and, and we're leaving it up to, to you folks to, to choose a new name. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Second, was any questions? I think the name is premature. I, if you need a hydrant when the development goes in, I have no problem with that, but I have serious concerns about some of that area being wet and some of the problems with adjacent areas so the planning board is going to have to sort that out but I'm not uh, I'm not happy to see us developing every square inch of land any further comments or questions no mr. mr. Bean yes, sir. could I make one comment Please. in that regard um, I know Mary I, Louise I get Henry excited uh, no 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 I I um, I'm excited as well I just wanted to let you know that um, on that development we encourage the developer to stay entirely out of the buffer zone and all of the grading and everything is well is beyond the 50-foot buffer. So they uh, sometimes you don't get developers that are as coachable, but but these folks are. Uh, the only intrusion that we have into the buffer is to um, actually replace uh, an existing sewer manhole that is within. It's the town's sewer. Uh, Chris Jacobs, who does a great job, has asked that that um, kind of ancient structure be replaced with a newer one. And I'll just remind everybody for the record because I think. Phil is probably the only one that knows this is that Mr. Scott actually donated that property for that easement for the to the town so um, I hope that pleases you a little bit to know that we have uh, taken everything out the other thing is too about that site is that the soils drain so well that everything is infiltrating in the soils and nothing is leaving the site so we're recharging the groundwater that's also within the aquifer zone so okay because there are some serious drainage problems on yeah, adjacent to it, there certainly are. Um, it, this site actually doesn't run water off currently. It receives water from, from adjacent lots, so that was a drainage challenge, but we've managed to satisfy the, the review. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Slepin Griffin. Is there um, a time that you need to have the street name for any special reason? No, and, and I actually thought it was a little premature too, but when we were at the PRC, they said you have to go to the selectmen to get the hydrant approved anyway. Why don't you just ask them about the road name at the same time so that you're not coming back? So uh, the only statement I have to the name is that there is no objection to the selectmen choosing the name, and we'd just like to have it. Uh, for the final mile hour before it goes to the registry for recording. When is, when is that? I would say that it's probably going to be a month or so. Uh, the planning board meeting is, is next month, um, and then at this course there's a month of appeal period. So if it were to come from you sometime in, in October, I think it would be fine. Thank you. Any, anything else? No, I, I think it's a great plan. Um, say, hate to see Ted's old house go. Um, that's a, that's a nice lot. Uh, we've all I've, I've always known it was going to be developed at some point mm -hmm. in time, um, but it sounds like a good plan. Sounds like like Susan's trying to keep it so that the, the wetlands are, are protected. Yeah. And uh, she, just so you know, she wrestled with the house as well, I'm and sure. uh, it's it's fallen upon her to to educate her her nieces, and I think actually. Um, she was talking about that when, when Fred happened to be walking by one day, and, and uh, it's fallen upon her to do that. So her emotional attachment to the house uh, it took a long time to uh, I'm sure it go. Did. I'm um, sure it did. But she's at the point now that she really wants to be able to provide for her, for her nieces and nephews. Very good. Thank you. Uh, any particular questions on the hydrant? No, I've shoveled that one and out there on Winnicott Road many <laughs> times. And <laughs> an extra one in there is probably a good idea for the length of the road. It, it is, and it's it's right between, so that there is no, there will be no house that's more than I think 500 feet from that. Which is perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, Mr. Boyd, barring any further questions or comments. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good night. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Let's see this part. Roman seven. 
approval of minutes, 1 August 11, 2014. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. A second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Roman 7, approval of minutes, number 2, August 18th, 2014, public section. I will so move. A second. Sure. Selectman Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. August 18, 2014, non-public meeting were sealed per RSA 91, Alpha 3, Roman 3. Oh, I did email a, a small correction on that to Christina. I believe she's made that. Okay. okay. Then I'll second that. second. All those that. in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 8, Town Manager's Report. Mr. Welch. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the American Legion has extended an invitation to the board and the community to participate in the dedication of the Global War on Terrorism Memorial Monument at 6 p.m. on Thursday, September 11th, 2014 at the American Legion Hall at 69 High Street in Hampton. The next Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will be Saturday, September 13th, 2014 from 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the Highway Garage, Route 11A in Brentwood. Please consult the online flyer at the town's website for information on what can be brought to the collection. And I, I suggest that strongly since some of the items that can be brought need to be paid for because they're special handling uh, items. So I don't want somebody to go and, and not know that in advance. The town has received information from the Federal Emergency Management Agency concerning the appeal process for the new federally designated flood insurance areas. Please consult the town's website for the federal flyer and information on the appeal process that was put up uh, earlier in the week, uh, last week. The board has received the latest version of the Joint Operations Plan 2014 from the Department of Resources and Economic Development for your review and approval. The board has also received the most recent update list of special use permits from DREAD for the use of the State Beach and Parks area. I have forwarded to the board a memorandum concerning the beginning of the next perambulation cycle in 2015. In order to schedule each perambulation, I would like to know if the board wishes to perform the, wa the walking of the town bounds themselves or would, like me, or would like to assign me, as it has been done in the previous time, uh, on behalf of the board uh, to do the perambulation, uh, which was done in 2008. And I'll tell you, the, the only one that's to be done in 2000. 15 is the town of Seabrook that involves three monuments uh, one on Route 1A and one at uh, uh, the, the Rock and, and one that's in the middle of the harbor which you can't see you can't dive to because it's underneath the harbor so um, so do you have to swim out to it anyways uh, well we can <laughs> we can see it by triangulation so <laughs> the uh, other bounds are all done two years later so they'll be coming due on the 17th 2017 uh, Mr. Chairman, I also had, uh, and these were late files. This is the uh, from the 401 Tavern and One Day Entertainment License uh, for the wounded for fundraiser for post number 35, the American Legion for the Wo Wounded Warriors Project. This has been approved by the Chief of Police, uh, and a, uh, an additional sidewalk uh, seafood vendors license for Sam's Casino Candies at 153 Ocean Boulevard. Um, and we're, we're talking about these in the past um, we've always seemed to have some people who come in late yeah. and anybody after tonight that, that, that shows up with one of these yeah. won't be able to receive it unless the board holds a special meeting just to take up that one item mm -hmm. in the past the board has allowed the office to go ahead and approve these provided they've been approved by all the safety departments and they follow the same regulations that you have um, without a vote of the board as long as they are within the containment area so there's no question about going outside and, and having those problems out there which the board has not approved any on so I would I would ask the board to approve these two so they can be taken care of this evening and in time for everything that needs to happen for them is that Sanbin's Fred That's Sanbin's yes, Casino okay. Candies yes okay at first I yep. didn't recognize yeah yep okay. Sanbin's yeah and the other one is the 401 Tavern for the Wounded Warrior Program. Sandwins is yummy. Uh, They're is good. Is it all right to move both at the same time, or? I, ass I assume so. Do okay. You do you also want something in there to allow you to? 
if the board wishes to consider to do that, uh, Christine and I would be happy to administer that for you and to make sure that it complies with your regulations. I would think so. What? I don't want yeah, anybody. If they to get any more in oh. between now and then to allow allow the, him to do it okay. on our behalf, so long as they meet all the requirements. As long as they don't have awful shirts, right? <laughs> right. Okay. So I'll second that. Hopefully, no bad shirts. Thank you. And we would encapsulate your verbiage per um, the 401 for the right. Wounded Warrior and that the I got candy salmon's operation. Candies, the yeah. amendment by Mr. Bridal. Yeah, and that is a couple uh, of other things, Mr. Chairman. Okay. But you go ahead and clear that. A second on that. Mr. Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Back to you, sir. Uh, just so people know, uh, we are going to have a firearms training for the police department on August 27th through August 29th, 2014. This is going to be night firing. Uh, I certainly want the neighbors to know that. Um, from 6 to 9 p.m., they will be manning the firing range down behind the public works facility. So, and that has been advertised in the newspaper. Um, we all heard about Mr. Keene, and we're going to prepare something for the family. Um, I gave each of you a yes. copy, <coughs> excuse me, of the draft report of the I and I study. Yep. I have the full study upstairs. If you'd like to read all three or four hundred pages of it, the draft anyhow, I've read it. Um, it's just thrilling reading. I, I have to tell you, if you wish to borrow it and take it home, read it in bed, uh, you've got a good night's sleep about five minutes in. So. Uh, <laughs> and you'll be dreaming of dollar signs. Yeah. Uh, well, big dollar signs. Big dollar yes, signs. Yes, very big. But this is for you to sign, I think, not for us. That's true. But you have to. Yes, I do have to. Do that. There. Uh, the other thing is that you all received on Friday, or they were made available on Friday. You may have picked them up over the weekend. Yeah. The proposed operating budget for the year 2015. We don't have a total figure for you that's firm yet because mm -hmm. we have not received two important things, probably the two biggest things in the budget, which is the insurance figures, and we have not received the retirement figures from the state. Uh. Both of those are due in September. As soon as we receive them, you will have them. Mm -hmm. And that will determine where the budget lies for that year, at least to start. Mm. And that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wolsey, questions for the town manager? Um, just uh, in your report, Fred, the American Legion uh, dedicating the monument on Thursday, September 11th. If people are done with that, they can come here. And watch the fire budget and the yeah. town clerk's budget because that's, you know, that's the night we're going to start working on the budget. Household hazardous waste collection day in Brentwood. You are they permanently shooed out of town? Uh, we we have told them they're not invited to return and please find another location other yeah. than Hampton. This is the second collection of the year. Okay, and that's always in Brentwood or has been right along okay. the, uh, the north end of the district, so to speak. That's not a move as a result of their shenanigans at the one in May. No, ma'am. Okay, but. We can look forward to not hosting. We have informed them that we wish not to host, given the prior problems. Excellent. Uh, on three, the FEMA um, appeal process, uh, documentation, and so forth. For those of you who watched the most recent precinct meeting, and I don't remember the date, there was a FEMA representative there. He did yes. quite a good job, uh, because, of course, the beach, you know, the flooding is a, a prime concern. And he really did quite a good job and, and took some good questions. So if people want to refresh their understanding or be brought up to speed a little bit on the flood situation. Uh, I thought it worked very well. And I'm, I'm foul for the perambulation. I'll go. <laughs> she just wants to go for the boat ride. <laughs> we did all the towns in my former. Actually, we swam the last time. So. <laughs> in my Slutman former incarnation. Yeah. Slutman, right. Oh, I did want to ask one thing. Sir. I'll wait. No, I'll wait for an old business. Second one. I have nothing under this report. Second one. Okay. Thank you. Old business one. Hampton Dread Joint Operations Plan. Mr. Welch, your comments, and then to the board. Uh, this has been received from the State uh, Department of uh, Resources and Econ Economic Development. Um, uh, you did appoint a small committee to to review this um, and to meet with them. Uh, and maybe the committee should report on that, on, on how they feel about it. Uh, I've, I've reviewed it. I believe this is what the committee agreed to. Uh, and we are prepared to implement it if the board proposes to pass it and sign it. 
So Selectman Woolsey. I refuse to sign it. I refuse to do anything with it. They will not come down and sit down and converse like human beings, and I want nothing to do with it. I'll make a motion that we accept Okay, it. can we just go around if there's any questions and, and, and pend your motion for a second, sir? Um, do you have any comments? No, I think they were very, um, you know, they, I think that they listened to the concerns and they were, they acted on them. And I, I think I understand their situation. Thank you, sir. So <laughs> I, um, I, I went through it again. The, uh, there was only one thing I found, Fred, and that was sir? under, huh? Sir. Uh, that was under the uh, dredge responsibilities on item four, the lobster traps, where it says uh, dredge may dispose of damaged traps that wash up on dredge property and bring them up to the town's facility and deposit them in a designated location or a dumpster. Mm. I would like it to say dumpster. Okay. So that there's no no clarification that they need to put it in a dumpster because it need they need to be hauled out of here. Right. So I think that I think that was when, and when we talked to them, they said they'd put it in a dumpster. So well, what they I I believe what they said was that they would have try to have fishing game put the dumpster in. Right. I'm not sure fishing game is going to do that. <laughs> uh, they in the past have um, at a certain time of the year, and I don't know what their I believe their collection policy is in, in the uh, the late fall, but I, I could be corrected on that. <clears throat> they put a dumpster over at the um, um, the fishing cooperative in Seabrook, and want all of us to truck the uh, the, the traps over there and put them in the dumpster for them. So and long as they the roll off, and they'll take them away. So long as Dred hauls them over there. Well, that's <laughs> one of the reasons this came up was because for three years they had failed not to. They right, and that's what that's why I was saying yeah, here for the dumpster here. Right. You know, so that we could have it in here, so that we get them hauled off, and we're not storing them and for a number of years. And I believe they said that there was room for a dumpster. Correct. Yeah, they, there is room. Our 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 group said there was room, room there was for a dumpster, right. and that we would do. They would so do that, that. Right. So that's why I, I instead of leaving it open, either or, yeah, close it down so that it's a dumpster. It's a dumpster. So that would be my. Okay. That was the only thing I found that, other than what we went through, on it. Other than else, a big relief to us. Pretty good, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So was that a change? That, that was the only. Ch that was the only proposal that I would. Ha if we're going to make, if you want to yeah. make some changes now, is and they agreed to it. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. You, that's set. You all set on that. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Anything else? Take the word or. Basically. Designated location or, and just have a dumpster provided by them. Right. Thank you. Um, Selectman Window. Was the discussion on doing this earlier in the year? <laughs> This well, has been discussed yeah. no. over and over again. I, I, I don't really understand why this has taken this long. Right, I mean, because we're doing it now and it's going to be and it's well, up gonna in be, April. Yeah. It's up in April and, and it was discussed with them while we were there that we should be doing this in January, February, March, the latest, so that right. we can have it yep. going into the season. And they, they were they were open to that. So. Yeah. Okay, so you feel that the meeting went fairly it well? It went very yes. well. Yeah, it did. Okay. I have a follow-up. Yes, ma'am. Dumpster. State owns property. Why don't they put the dumpster on their own property? They don't have a location for it. We they have, don't have a location. We have the property to do it. It's one central location. It works, and it can work, so long as they're going to make sure they clean them up. That's why I didn't want them to have a designated location. I wanted a dumpster so that we can get rid of it. I don't see why the dumpster has to be on our property, and I don't see why they have to be accessing it on our property. Remember, the, did you go down and see those piles of, of yes, whatever? You saw that. Oh, yeah. That they dumped on us quite happily for years. All those, quote, rakings. And I think I think with this here, we, we addressed a lot of those questions, and I think we have a, a, an agreement with them. And, yeah. And well, the town addressed the question because they voted to take out, take away the authority of the state to dump the beach rankings in March, well, which didn't get them very happy, I'm sure. But th thank you for your comments, and, and uh, um, perhaps I'll be more collegial, but I, I, I won't distance <coughs> myself too far from Selectman Woolsey's uh, sentiments on a, on a larger picture. And uh, as important as this document is, <coughs> it is it is the small bore, and there is uh, there's larger uh, game with. Uh, a more sophisticated analysis, specifically 
Um, under new business tonight, number one, the town manager has been charged to look at a, a wider umbrella of issues. But at this state, thank you for those that participated with the state. Um, it's a very kinetic, fluid, uh, important boundary in this room for improvement. But uh, uh, there is a motion. Uh, and just yes, one sir. thing, just so that we are a fact, this is only good till April of next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. right. So right. if we find something in it that we don't <laughs> like, we can work, address that in February, March. They did ask that we consider extending it for two years. Right, and we decided that we wanted to not do that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a motion uh, to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. With that one correction? Second. With the, with the one correction. correction. Yes, uh, seconded by Selectman Griffin. All those in favor? Four. All those opposed? Absolutely. Selectman Woolsey, absolutely opposed. Uh, the motion passes four to one. Thank you. Old business uh, number two. Eight parking passes for the seafood festival at Church Street to be used by Dread. Mr. Welch. Uh, at the discussion um, about the usual procedures for the seafood festival, um, we believe the board was left for the impression that there would be eight parking spaces for the Chamber of Commerce. That is not true. Those parking spaces are for Dread and Dread employees. Um, the board had previously voted not to grant parking spaces on town property to Dread employees. Uh, so we have brought this back because we want you to clearly understand that this was for Dread employees and we would need your permission because of your prior vote to allow that to happen. This would cost us about $1,000 in parking fees. May I just kind of guide us through this? Um, Mary Louise, would you like to uh, uh, make a motion and reaffirm our, re our original position? I will absolutely do that. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Bridal. Any discussion? Um, now, this isn't what we've always approved all the other years, Fred, um, going into all the other years that I was here. They, this, something like this was always approved. So that's, that's one last year, it wasn't approved, and right. we're just going to decide that it was done wrong for all the other years? No, it's just that when you were presented the information, you know, I, I walked away by, by the representatives of the chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, I walked away with the impression this was for parking for the members of the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. uh, who are going to be working on the Seafood Festival. So the letter we have here? That is from the chamber. Mm -hmm. Those are for dread spaces, not for the chamber spaces. That is correct. So we, we felt it was honest to tell the board that because they didn't say they were for dread, that they are, so that you would know that. We, we knew that there was a reservation before um, and that you might very well approve it as far as them parking there is concerned. That wasn't our issue. Our issue was we wanted you to know what was going on. So, I mean... Dread has their, their their state park down the down the beach. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have no problem and no qualm with allowing the chamber eight spaces for them. It, that it, is, but that's that, not what's but written. But that is here. Here is here is the motion that uh, these are not for the chamber. These are for state employees that will cost the town a thousand dollars. Then state has their own parking lot. There's a motion. Uh, any further discussion? May I? Okay. May I inflict we a want to quote on you, this. gentlemen? Go yes, go ahead. He who sups with the devil must use the long spoon. <laughs> Ooh. Rick, to answer your question, mm -hmm. every year before they've specifically asked for dredge use, except for last year where it was rejected. Mm -hmm. They did not and ask I do think year. at different times we've let them use other areas besides the town parking. We have. I, I think in some years it has been that way. They were allowed to go out of Church Street or the town parking lot at other areas. I just don't see the advantage to uh, to being disagreeable to something that's worked well for so many years and there was never any complaints in any way. Mr. Waddell. Okay, I'm confused. Do we give Dread the parking so that the chamber then can park closer to the seafood? Is that the way it works? They, I don't think they, they move really the Dread know. cars? No. 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 In the cha because the seafood festival is being held right and occupying this parking space for the state employees park yeah. uh, near the main complex 
they will not be allowed to park there. So they have asked, or actually they have required the Chamber of Commerce in their permit to provide eight parking spaces uh, on town property for their eight employees that will be displaced. My, my feeling would be to go along with, with Rick that if we've done this and the other thing is if it helps the chamber, I don't and have a problem. And offer them a spot somewhere else that aren't top, uh, which, because I can specifically remember it being done, uh, like some of those spaces on Church Street or what's the name of that other place over Island there? Island Path. Island Path. I mean, how is it going to hurt it? It's the, uh, and you know, I talk to people that work for the chamber, I'm sure that there's some type of a trade-off that has to affect the people that are parking for the chamber too. They already have a, pro uh, it, it's very difficult with them, even with the state, on a daily basis. And it's a diff difficult situation, but why should we make it more difficult? I think uh, we've discussed this. Uh, all those who would like to continue the practice and allow these eight spaces. Uh, actually, w they have been granted. We don't need a motion. Is there a motion to the contrary? Well, I uh, thought it, we it, had the motion on the not, table. Not to provide, right. Two. I, I, I don't think that motion is going to carry. Would you like to rescind that motion? I think I think I'm not that I vote to give the state the time of day. Okay. All right. So, but so. They're, they're they're getting their rate now. Un unless you want to go forward, I don't think and it's going to carry. And you're talking a thousand dollars in lost revenue, which we apparently have done for years. But that's no problem, obviously. Okay. Um, People come and go all day long, and right. there's going to be excess. Extra Dr. Noel's space. signatures on this, and that's the chamber. And, uh, Why make it more right. difficult? I think for that's them. rather deceptive, to be perfectly frank uh, with it's you. A, it's a it's a big event, and uh, it, it has to do with things global. like the uh, Easter egg hunt, and uh, you know, other things. We have to work together. We can't work again. Just work against each other constantly. And are these little kids that can't step up to the plate and put something on their stationery and ask directly for what they want? They're going to hide behind the chamber. Okay, I don't I, think okay, it's that we're, way. We're, well, we're, I do. Okay, well, just to, just a point of order. We're going to we're going to leave this issue. I think there's a consensus just to leave well enough alone, uh, and we're going to move on. Uh, Roman nine. Old business, number three, 2013 town audit. Of course, uh, an important document that came out. Wanted to put that on the agenda to see if the board had any comments on that going forward. Mrs. Wilson. The main thing I would like to see is ha get this right up on the, uh, I think we asked to have it put on the uh, internet. Is it up? I don't I, I just popped it up in, I'm, I'm an old guy, so it says you need a different something or other to put it up. So um, it, it's the intents there, and I think they're getting it up. They've okay. been given it to put up, right? Okay, because yeah. I think that's critical that's to right. have it up. I just haven't looked to see if yeah, it's there. I, yeah. I was looking, but um, <clears throat> I struggled. Uh, sucking <laughs> Griffin. Oh. Okay. Sucking bridal. So we'll go. Uh, I, I just had, had comments, and I, I thought that it was Im important and to study that. I know you all have, and, and the taxpayers have, and there's been an emphasis on it. But it is, it is the uh, snapshot, uh, and it uh, provides that aperture going forward. And, and just some of my comments, and I wanted to speak uh, in general uh, on it in, in a, just a brief synopsis. There are about 30 things that jumped out to me. And it's primarily we, we, we sit here and we speak to our, our department heads and, and we uh, try and manage and lead uh, uh, with Mr. Welch uh, an extraordinary workforce. But this document really talks about uh, the taxpayer and their tremendous commitment. And I was struck by the challenges that, that are, are coming and going forward mm -hmm. and, and the tremendous commitment that the taxpayer has provided in the last 15 years. And uh, a perusal of this document, um, whether it's an hour or several hours or five or six hours, reflects what an extraordinary job and commitment uh, the hardworking men and women and uh, taxpayers and voters and employees that are, are, are taxpayers in this town um, put forward. And they've done so in a working class town uh, since 2008. And the cavalry didn't rescue the taxpayer. Uh, there were a lot of people bailed out in this country that uh, um, uh, perhaps uh, with money to be paid back in the future. But Hampton workers and, and Hampton small business owners didn't see any relief. And they marched forward. And uh, I'm very proud to be a member of that community. And I just had a couple of comments, if you'll bear with me, to focus on that and highlight what an extraordinary job. Um, and seeing that Mr. Silberdick was in here and represents, I think, in a, in a general sense, all taxpayers, as we all do. But it is for the fiscal year ended uh, 31 December 2013. 
and it is the annual financial report for the town of Hampton at 100 Winnicott Road in Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842, and it is by uh, Plodzik and Sanderson. And uh, again, it's a vital, important uh, document. It's uh, deserving of public analysis and uh, board synopsis. And it is uh, an examination. It's a major fund-driven, uh, not so much a future balance sheet, but it's a major fund-driven document uh, that is the essence of the audit. Uh, the fund financial statements uh, focus on current expenditures. They don't go what's coming over the horizon. We talked about tonight, we don't have numbers on health insurance. Uh, a stratospheric uh, spiral and increase in those numbers. Retirement costs, dramatic increase in our retirement costs. As we go to prepare a budget, those are the last numbers to come in, and it's, it's uh, timely that, that that came up tonight. Um, so if you look on page um, two, you'll see that it's an analysis driven of the funds, but not um, going forward. Um, GASPI 34 is not complied with per the audit, and that's uh, with our capital assets. Those are being uh, recorded and depreciated, and uh, that depreciation is an expense, and working with the director and Mr. Welch, we've talked about that. Uh, there are solutions to that. They're economical. They're important to clear up this report where there are some adverse uh, um, not top-notch results assigned to us. And that is on page three of the uh, audit. Uh, long-term liabilities uh, in 2012, and this speaks to the taxpayer, our long-term liabilities in 2012 were $17.4 million. Uh, in 2013, uh, they have increased. There are now $24.7 million in long-term liabilities. Our total liabilities in 2012 $33.1 million. Our total liabilities in 2013 is now $42 million. This is from our audited statement, and this is on page four. Total taxes, license, permits, fees, revenue, the difference between 2012 and 2013 is $701,000. So we've accrued significant liabilities. Our income is up somewhat, and that is on page five. Total government activities, the change in the expenses for the capital outlay, $6.9 million. That's a 26% increase over 2012. That's on page six. Again, significant taxpayer contributions to this corporation. Total capital expenditures with no depreciation recorded, almost $9 million. And again, that's an important consideration to do. It's picked up by the audit. That is on page six. Total long-term debt, $25.4 million. That's a 43.5% increase from year-end 2012. That's on page six of the audit. And these aren't my numbers. These are off the audit, and that's why I'm referencing the pages. Investments, Mr. Silberdick was in here tonight. Uh, our uh, investments of that fund is almost $20 million. They have done a heck of a job. Uh, and that is on page eight. Our compensated absences liability uh, is now at $1.18 million for our employees. The taxpayers are, are working hard to support our employees with that liability. That's on page 11. The unassigned fund balance at the end of the year was $4.8 million. That's on page 14. So we have $19 million in our uh, trust funds or our investment funds, if you will, and year-end $4.8 million. And, of course, there's a change in that with some of the, the recent developments. But that means we have $23 million in the bank right now. Uh, pay uh, by this town to the state of New Hampshire, school portion, page 21, this town sends to the state of New Hampshire to educate other children $6.6 .6 million. And that is on page 21. So uh, the rest of the state owes uh, John Q, average working citizen out there, uh, uh, they own a beer. And uh, that's a heck of a lot of money for a community like this that's working class. And I want to say that again, and Rusty, you're a school board member, but uh, um, it's hard to believe these numbers when you actually do look at them. The pay uh, to the state of New Hampshire school portion is $6.6 .6 million that doesn't educate our kids, doesn't contribute right. to our roads, and does nothing for the people of Hampton. And that is one heck of a contribution. The county portion is, again, on page 21, that's $3 million. And I know the county does an extraordinary amount for us. However, um, that's $9 million uh, that's shipped out right there that's on your tax rate. 
Uh, total deferred inflows, and this is important in this day and age. We talked about this economy. On page 26, there's $2.4 million of delinquent taxes. And I've never met anybody that doesn't want to pay their bills. I've never met anybody that doesn't want to pay their taxes. I've never met anybody that wants to pay 12% in arrears. I've yeah. never met anybody when the lien is recorded that that rate goes to 18%. And that's where that ends. And some of these folks in this town, through no fault of their own, uh, are paying excessive uh, interest charges that uh, border on usury. And Mr. Silberdick was in tonight talking about changes for uh, the legislative agenda. I think that needs a serious scrub. Uh, I think we have our own agenda for our legislative needs in our town. Uh, and that certainly would be one. And I happen to know uh, a small town. We all know people that struggle. There's been notes in file for people struggling. And after three years, they're paying 18 percent on 18 percent. And uh, uh, it, it borders on being a debtor's prison, and it, it's not good stuff. Uh, there was $37 million bonded in infrastructure debt since 1999 by the hardworking people of Hampton. $37 million. That's bonded debt, and that's for infrastructure. That doesn't include other capital expenditures, but that's just the bonded debt. And that's on page 28. Amortization of bonds goes through 2013 is 27 million, that's page 28. Our employee retirement contributions, that's on page 28. Uh, the contributions, in, and this speaks to the tremendous, tremendous support of the taxpayer uh, to our employees. And I read off page uh, 32, rather. Uh, January 1, 2013 through June 30, 2013, the contributions by the town uh, for police, during that time period, was 19.95 percent of salary. For fire, it was 22.89 percent of salary. And for all other employees, it was 8.8 percent of salary. July 1, 2013, through the end of the year, 2013, that was, for police, 25.3 percent of salary for contribution. For fire, 27.74 for contribution of salary. And for all other employees, 10.77. So again, the taxpayer is ponying up in an extraordinary way to support the people who <coughs> service and protect us and provide these, these command element uh, services. The contribution requirements for the Town of Hampton for the fiscal years 2011, 2012, and 2013. 2011, the number was 1.4 million. 2012, the number was 1.57 million. And finally, in 2013, 1.8 million. I would be very interested uh, for an email on when we received the new numbers. That is a 30% uh, a increase uh, within 1,000 days, and that's substantial. And uh, again, it speaks to the, the tremendous commitment of our taxpayer. Gatsby going forward at the end of this audit on page 34, it talks about 67 and 68 to bring these items on balance sheet. That will be what the taxpayer in Hampton has for an un 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 undisclosed contribution for retirements going forward. They, this is a defined benefit pension plan, but it's also defined payment. And we know just from the numbers I read off page 32, so it's both a defined benefit and it's a defined payment, but we don't know what the costs are going forward. Gatsby 67 and 68, and whether some of us are on the board or not, that is coming. And failure to comply with that will affect bonding, will affect bonding decisions, and will affect bonding rates in the future. And that's from a discussion with the accounting firm this week. Finance director is, is pursuing these, uh, these solutions, the 67 and 68 going forward. Interestingly, um, state rooms meals receipts. We already told, uh, heard what this town does for state education. For all the tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars that are sent to Concord, uh, we received $662,000 back from the state for the engineers. For the general fund from the federal government, we, see, we received zero dollars. That's on page 35. Um, our, again, our unassigned fund balance is $4.8 million. And of course, the health insurance rates we're waiting on and the retirement. But I thought it was important for the taxpayer to review that audit and, and to make those salient observations. And thank you for letting me share that with you.
And Mr. Chairman, yes, the lack of the state contributing to the retirement. You've shown the retirement percentages, but lack of contribution from the state, which set up that system. Duly noted. In addition to the rooms and meals tax and other. Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Uh, new business. An well, old business. Well, well, Can I just? Y yes, sir. I'm sorry. We got to we got to clear some old business. Um, old business. Go ahead. Can it be the the. Uh, New Hampshire Municipal Association, mm -hmm. the thing that he was talking about. Yep. I mean, it's still time for us to do that. It's mm -mm. September 26th that it's due. No. Yes, That's the meeting date. The date to file is <coughs> September 17th. The date to file counterproposals. Oh, counterproposals, yeah. Yes. But, but I mean, it, we can still come up with and have somebody go there and vote no. on the proposals oh, yes. that no. are done. Yes. No, no. Yes. Not unless we sit down and discuss it here in public and have a consensus. Okay, can I just get a point That's of order? That's what I was trying it, to do. It's okay. been brought up. This is simply the New Hampshire Municipal Association's mm -hmm. time frame. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. This is not if we want to bring our legislators in and have a discussion and talk about not perhaps just creating laws, but uh, amending current laws, deleting current laws that benefit Hampton. Because quite frankly, I think I'm more interested in that than what the I have reviewed the New Hampshire Municipal Association's recommendations. I don't find any of it particularly germane to us. I find most of it small bore. But I am keenly interested in what is our deadline, bringing our legislators in, that we have a discussion. It doesn't have to be filtered through the NHMA. And I, I've reviewed that, and uh, Mr. Silberdick spoke about it. But I would say to the taxpayers on the television that I found none of it that would essentially benefit them in any substantial way or form. Uh, but if we want to talk about that, we can go around the board. Yeah, uh, we're paying dues to the NHMA, and I have a little sour spot for the NHMA, particularly because of the LGC. We're paying dues to this outfit. They lobby in behalf of the communities, and I think the least we can do is state Hampton's position, particularly on some of the, the heavier duty things like that pollution control. But I don't think, I don't want to see a person or, or see, have us send the poor manager up again. He's always fetching and carrying. I don't think it's fair to uh, come to any kind of consensus without all of us discussing this. Some of the things were, were practically irrelevant. You don't have to go into them. But some of the issues are, are serious. And if the NHMA can get enough muscle together as it's lobbying, uh, as it's lobbying service, we might be able to help. I think we have outstanding legislators, but there are only five of them, and the rest of the state says the hell with the seacoast. So I don't, I don't think there's a problem with the local legislators getting the message. I think they have a pretty good feeling. I think you did, and so did you when you were in the legislature. But we're talking about statewide, and these are the people who are taking the money for the schools and building pools. Remember Claremont? Remember all that good stuff? And I would like to have, either we ignore it totally, as far as I'm concerned, or have some relevant discussion on some of the really hot topics that were given to us that we had time to deal with and, and send, a, send a memo or send a representative or something and say these are the five hot issues, whatever it is. But I, I just, you know, I, I, I agree with you that we, it's nice to sit down with our representatives. They're going to get sandbagged. They're sandbagged all the time in Concord. They're trying. They're knocking themselves out and the other community. What, right or wrong? Well, I think as a, as a state rep, you've got to build some allies up there. You have to do that, and I think our state reps do that. Yeah. I, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't see a necessity for the NHMA. I'd rather see us work more directly with mm -hmm. our own reps and, and and spend our time and effort on that than yeah. doing this here. Thank but you. I'm just concerned there are so few of them compared to the rest of the state and we're banging our head on the wall. But if you, if you if they work together with other cities and towns and reps that are, are other reps that are in the same similar situation as us and there are some the lakes region the the other areas uh, they can work together and, and, and get some of these things so I'd rather spend that more of our effort on, on working with our local legislatures. And I agree with you. And, and, and let me just go to Rick and then you, Jim. Yes, sir. Yeah, I also agree with your position. But, you know, I just hate to uh, 
take the negative approach that is voiced here so often, this is the system. We have to work it with the system, not against it. There's an old saying, you can't fight City Hall. And I think this is it, State Hall. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, people have a, have a negative aspect about this from before, but I, I do think they've changed. And I think that they do do a lobbying effort, effort on the part of the municipalities. Mm -hmm. And I think that one, two things, either we go along, with, we work with them, or we get out of it. Mm -hmm. Don't, I mean, if we're going to pay $15,000 a year, is it, is yeah, right, 16? Right. If we're going to pay that, then we might as well work with them. Otherwise, yeah. we really should get out of it. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a lobbying group, the same as mm -hmm. they're paid lobbying groups, and they do lobby up there, they do, you know, work for municipalities. I know uh, on, on pension reform, which wouldn't have been one of your favorites, Rusty, but I, I know I, they worked an awful lot on that with municipalities. They worked an awful lot of, of uh, lobbying on the spiking issue. Yeah. Uh, so it's either, I, I agree, the kind of either, boy, I almost said something now, <laughs> an old expression. <laughs> either, either we pay it or we don't, you know? Yeah. I mean, either we go along with it or we just get out. Yeah. I think, I think there's room uh, to, to address both of those. I thought that their, their legislative agenda uh, didn't uh, impact us or our people in any way, shape, or form. Uh, let's go back to old business. Okay. Uh, any old business, Selectman Woolsey, we'll go around the yeah. board. Uh, two items on old business, actually. Coal Farm Road. And I absolutely agree with the gentleman who was in here, Mr. McGuire, I believe. Because I work there. I'm there all the time. I'm there every day. Coming and going. Huge trucks zooming along and and it's unfair for a neighborhood and I I mentioned earlier and I don't know whether this would fly but somebody put some of our big sign boards up put them to use and say you know frequently patrolled by Hampton police or slow down or don't come here or something but that neighborhood does not deserve what's happening they do not and I absolutely agree and I see it all the time so if there's anything we can do, I would appreciate it. Uh, Fred, are we going to go over the INI report with um, Mr. Noyes and Mr. Jacobs? Uh, do you think the next time they're in here? Because I think this requires some serious consideration. No, this is the draft, but yes, I believe that's his intention to come in and his next visit to uh, to, to begin to uh, the policy of addressing that. Mm -hmm. and start working through it. A scary report, frankly. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, sir. Um, Fred, now uh, this is how is it, is it true that there is a state law that there 30 miles per hour is the lowest speed limit, right? What the law states is that you may post at 25 miles per hour, provided you have done an engineering study of the road. <laughs> Other than that, no speed limit lower than 30 miles an hour can be posted. So we haven't done a study of that road. We haven't done a study of any of the roads. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the town has. So why are there 20 mile an hour limits well, there? I thought I got them all, but uh, <laughs> and I, I don't. <laughs> there are two 20 mile an hour signs there. However, they're yellow signs. And yellow signs are Caution. advisory only. Right. Yeah. They're to slow people down for the curve. So that's. So we do put caution signs up. And, and the yellow signs, they are not enforceable from a radar standpoint right. or from the police department standpoint unless the person operating is operating in a reckless manner. Then they are enforceable. So like for during a snowstorm or something like well, that? Well, even it could be a perfect day like today. and They could be operating in a reckless manner. They could be trying, there's an S curve there. They could be cutting the curve and trying to be on the wrong side of the street at, 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 at 30 miles an hour. And, and that would be a reckless operation if they hit someone or endanger someone. And the other thing I wanted to ask you about is we had a discussion about the gas station up here. Has a letter been sent to the owners there? We have tried to contact them. Uh, we've received no response back, so we're going to have town council write a letter to them. Uh, asking them to please clean up. Um, beyond asking, there's really nothing much we yeah. can do on it. I know that I've been told 
uh, that a number of groups in town have tried to contact them and said that they would be happy to clean up for them. Mm -hmm. And they were told to stay off their property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's not been a willingness there yes. at all to cooperate or to clean up and make the, the area look, I'll call it decent. Mm -hmm. Because it does yeah. not look decent. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. Is there any type of um, warrant article that we could do, uh, not just against that place, but against similar infractions where we could beef up our uh, ability to do something? I mean, I've seen since I've been here, I've seen other buildings that we've worked to get them to do something. It's It's... Something we can't legislate in New Hampshire, if this was Virginia, I would tell you yes, we'd pass a warrant article, and uh, if they didn't clean up in a certain number of days, the town would send crews down there, clean it up, and we'd send them a bill. Uh, but unfortunately, that can't happen in New Hampshire unless legislation is enacted by the general court. Mm -hmm. So, I, we're kind so, of at their mercy in a way, but they're kind of at our mercy in another way. But so. we are going to send a letter out. So. Yes, because we can't seem to get a hold of them. Yeah, well, I think that we should send the, the letter out immediately. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Clark. The only two questions, the things I had, one was the gas station, similar to Rick. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is with with uh, Toll Farm Road, I think we, uh, we asked the chief to look at the Highway Safety Committee to look at that, because that's his preamble. That's what they do. Uh, probably nobody travels Toll Farm Road more than me. I know that corner. There are some issues there. Uh, however, there's there's some things that I think could be done on property owners in the area to help limit this, uh, uh, reduce the limited sight distance there. Uh, so I, I would like, to, if we could, to get the, you know, get the police chief to at least talk to the highway safety committee and see what they can look at it. Yeah. I, w I would also like to get them to uh, make a decision on whether or not we can actually. Uh, put ribbing out of the road. Ah. You know, as you approach the toll booth, you have that yep. ribbing yep. that causes you to come to attention when you're going too fast. Yep. Uh, I'd like to see that installed on the roadway so yeah. that people will have to slow down. Yep, yes. that's. Yes. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's probably more effective than. We may have to do it annually because the snow plows may take it up, right. but, right. you know. Uh, but we should do something of that nature. In fact, we try to make them indented to the roadway so that rumble strips, rumble, rumble, rumble strips. strips, so they won't they won't be fooled with the plows. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Select and we're done. Yes. Whole business. Uh, just very quickly, the ribbing on the road. Yeah. Yes. You know, by the toll booth. Yeah. My granddaughter was in our car one day. We're going. Went over the ribbing. She said, "We have that in our car too." <laughs> 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 but the uh, with the gas station going along with the gas station um, on High Street. The building that was the Assembly of God Church that yes. was then the academy. Yeah. It's, it's an absolute mess. It's a mess. They yeah. took down, they had the real estate sign up, which blocked the, the mm. rusted signs, the real estate signs down up. Yeah. And the, the lot is just overflowing. Yeah. I was yeah. by there the other day. It's just. Yeah. Uh, has somebody bought that, do we know? or? I don't know if anybody has bought it. Yeah, so if we send a light, if we can. Try and track that down too. I think okay. that would be because it, it's yeah. it's atrocious. Well, yeah. someone did buy it from the the status of that is, it went into foreclosure and the a, a lady uh, a lady I think she's Indian, um, who has been before the board many times trying to sell it, uh, or con it has been approved for actually for some condos or something. But she's trying to sell that too. So she's a person that bought it from foreclosure, okay, no. and now she's trying to flip it. And she hasn't. She's had several things that she's brought forward, but none of them have flown. Lisa Erdenoff wanted to mow it. Kennel. Put something over the sign. Well, we could. Uh, you know, Easy. I think it is the type of thing we're just going to have to ask people and hope that people will be decent. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. Anything else, Mr. Waddell? No. Okay. Uh, my uh, contribution, my final for the, uh, uh, is uh, a memorandum sent by Mr. Welch to the board on July 31st. It is from the trustee of the trust funds. On page three of that document, there are RSA changes that are going to be effective in 2014. It's 
my understanding that that's being shot by the town attorney. So if we can uh, review that memorandum, if Fred can resend it, we can discuss that. It's warrant article implications, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll move that ball along for the, uh, the good uh, gentleman, Mr. Silberdick. Any old business, last call. Thank you very much. Roman 10, new business one, town manager's contract. Mr. Welch, taxpayers. Uh, board uh, Frederick W. Welch Town Manor's evaluation for 2014 is the basis for the town manager's renewal of the contract. Uh, there was unanimous uh, consent and a unanimous vote. Uh, the table or the uh, document that was uh, uh, approved, produced, and with considerable effort by Wanda Robertson uh, the week prior to her passing. Um, the, the document consists of a Board of Selectmen written evaluation, a Board of Selectmen numeric evaluation, a Board of Selectmen immediate assigned objectives for the town manager, the town, manager, uh, town manager's accomplishments. Uh, number five is an enclosure is New Hampshire RSA 37 colon 6, which is the powers and duties in particular for a town manager. Number six is the employment agreement that was offered and accepted for the years 2015 through 2018. There is a signature page and the town manager's employee response. And if I may, the immediate assigned objectives by the Board of Selectmen, some of those were discussed tonight. Uh, the state of New Hampshire relationship, uh, the economic cost of the town of Hampton for services provided to the state of New Hampshire, the joint operation plan timeliness and effectiveness, money issue for the reimbursement of our considerable efforts down there on state property, an increased awareness and appreciation for, of the state for the town contributions and just exactly what we do. And, and this, this will kind of bring it to the fore and give our chief executive the authority uh, from the Board of Selectmen, from the people of the town of Hampton. And we've just looked at the audit and some of our challenges to to uh, recoup and have a better relationship with the state on that. Um, and then um, another uh, objective is uh, to lead the Legislative uh, Governor's Council and this board uh, in an effort to advance the Hampton interest. And we talked about that uh, a little bit with our legislative effort. Um, infrastructure CIP, uh, one, identification of immediate infrastructure needs, the costs, and the tax impact. So that is an immediate assigned objective and then a close supervision by Mr. Welch and prioritization of the CIP effort. It was signed by Mr. Welch, the Hampton Town Manager, on the 18th of August. Town Manager's accomplishments. The employment agreement. Agreement effective as of 8-18-2014 by and between the Town of Hampton, a municipal corporation of the State of New Hampshire with a principal business at 100 Winnicott Road, Hampton, New Hampshire, and Frederick Welch, of 191 Walton Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, hereafter called manager or employee. Recitals 1 General. On June 30th, 2015, the above named Frederick W. Welch shall continue in the employment of the town of Hampton as manager, having commenced in that position on March 12th, 2007, pursuant to the provisions of RSA Chapter 37, and having all powers and duties set forth therein. His employment has been continuous and unbroken since two, March, 2000, March 12, 2007, and this employment agreement is intended to continue that employment with the same benefits until June 30, 2018. He can, continues to be considered an exempt 40-hour-per-week employee. Number three, salary. Subject to the terms and conditions of this agreement, and while engaged in performing this specified du his specified duties for the town, the manager shall be paid an annual salary as follows. $108,000 gross, payable in weekly installments of $2,076.92 gross each week for the year June 30th, 2015 through June 30th, 2016. In such sum, as the Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen shall vote to pay ma the manager following his performance evaluation at the end of that initial 12-month period, as set out in paragraph 7 below for the years 2017 and 2018. A Town Manager's Wage Increase Tax Impact Statement would look like this. His current salary of $96,809 is .035 cents per thousand on the tax base. His increase of salary 
of $11,191 is .004 cents per thousand. The new salary from June 2015 next year would be .039 cents per thousand total for our town manager. Again, that was with a unanimous vote of the entire Board of Selectmen. Performance evaluation. The Board of Selectmen shall review and evaluate the performance of the manager every 12 months. The manager shall be eligible and subject to Chapter 3 compensation of the Town of Hampton personnel policy is amended, except that the manager shall not be considered an employee at will, may be removed or disciplined only for just cause, in the terms of the Town's personnel policy in effect of January 1, 2004. Mr. Welch again has accepted the offer. He has had a response to this offer, and it is part of the official document. Thank you very much, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. New business, Roman 10. Number two, waiver. Request bid 2014-010 Eaton Park Ball Field Lights Alpha. Purchasing policy section 718-4B. Award of the bid or professional proposals less than three bidders. Comment on that initially tonight. Mr. Welch, can you expound? Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to expound. Um, we did uh, prepare the bid documents. We did mail them to four vendors who had previously given us estimates for the work and expressed interest in doing the work. Uh, we specified a particular type of light uh, because that light's guaranteed for 25 years and includes replacement of all bulbs and repair of any materials that may be faulty or, or uh, become defective during that 25-year period. Uh, we mailed the bids out ourselves uh, to all those vendors. Only one returned a bid. Um, these people are all pre-qualified by the manufacturer because they've all installed these systems before. Uh, so we thought that was probably the best we could do um, within a short period of time and get them installed in this particular calendar year. If the board would like us to, we'd be happy to go back out and rebid these items, uh, but it probably will not result in installation this year. Selectman Wilson. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would be happy in behalf of the Recreation Department to move to waive the request on the bid 2014-010 for the Eaton Park ball field lights. A second. I'll second that. So we'll second it. by Mr. Bridal. Discussion. And back to you, Mary Louise. Any discussion? No. Selectman no Griffin. Problem. No discussion. Selectman Bridal. My only discussion is I think uh, we have tried at mm -hmm. best to go out and find people that were qualified, people that were willing to do this job. You had pe four four businesses that were pre-qualified. They were given the full chance to do it. I think that uh, just because the three businesses decided not to send one in should not handcuff us to getting this work done, which the vote has approved. So I I think we have gone about our our, our uh, done our due diligence and tried to get people to bid and the old saying. And we'll use old sayings tonight. You can bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And I think that's the case here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, and, you know, Fred, if you're satisfied with that, that we did a, you know, an adequate job of going out and, and trying to get. We tried very hard. We talked to each of these vendors. Um, <clears throat> we talked to them before we went to town meeting because we need to have a cost to bring to the town. Uh, to, to resolve this issue with the one we were putting forward. Mm -hmm. And um, each of the vendors worked closely with us. Um, yeah. They had both the system we wanted to install and other systems that were available to us through them. Uh, and we decided on the system we decided on simply because nobody else was offering us a guarantee. Mm -hmm. and, right. and the guarantee is, is really substantial when you start talking about uh, maintenance and upkeep and labor yeah. that's associated with that. So and particularly for a 25-year period. Uh, so we, we decided to bid only that particular product. And for some reason, three of those bidders did not respond. I can't tell you why. Maybe they have too much on their plate. Um, they were knowledgeable about what we were doing, and we did, I know Recreation did talk to them extensively in order to get those figures. Because we wanted more than one set of figures to give to you before we went to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, my, my comments before the vote, uh, simply, uh, I would like to read uh, the Utility Services uh, and Assistance, Inc. Uh, President's letter, Mr. Russ Skeffington, that you all copied on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say uh, um, that uh, the installation of electrical uh, uh, assets uh, in the town is an important issue, especially when there's young people. Uh, electricity can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, Town Manager, Town of Hampton, New Hampshire, Ray Bid 2014-010, Eaton Park, Soft Field Field Lighting. Utility Service and Assistance, Inc. submits its bid to successfully complete the attached bid document. In close, you will find bid form and bid bond in the amount of 10%. Utility Service and Assistance, Inc., USA, Inc., has completed over 45 Musco installations in New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, and Vermont. Also attached is a list of current installations and locations. Should you need additional information, please do not hesitate to call or contact our office. Please let this letter serve as a notice that USA Inc. is very familiar with the site and project. We have gone through a thorough visit with both Mike Berry from Musco and the Hampton Recreation Department personnel. Thank you for the opportunity to enter the bid process respectfully. Tom Skeffington, the president, uh, of importance is the fact that there is a bid bond attached to this. That speaks volumes about the risk yeah. management, the professional liability capability, and the financial strength of this uh, um, bid member with the town of Hampton. Additionally, uh, approval of the Internet can be very interesting today for any type of service. But uh, this is a completed bid, um, and uh, to me, it looks really, really strong. I've examined the bid bond. Uh, that's all I'll have to say. All those in favor? Uh, just one more thing, yes, too, Mr. Chairman. This does not impact the tax rate. This is coming out of the Recreation Fund. Yes, ma'am. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank yeah. you. Uh, for the public's uh, joy, perhaps, closing <laughs> comments? <laughs> is that Wolsey? No. Okay. Closing comments? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything? No. Okay. The only thing I had was the we had this letter in our packet about the uh, bench. Is that anything we have to? Uh, just it will it will be coming to you. We sent it to Rec to okay. determine whether or not that's the appropriate place for the yeah. bench and whether or not we can yeah. put it there. It, it very strange thing about this this particular request, and that is that uh, when we went to look at the mm -hmm. the official records of the town and the assessing office, that piece of property isn't listed as a town piece of town property, but it is. Yeah. It is a piece of town property. And it's and a good spot for a, a bench. We agree. Absolutely. Agree 100 percent. So Greg's going to going to approve that, and, and it'll be coming back to you after yeah. after we talk to the okay. applicant. I just saw it here. I didn't know it was. But it is a nice little it is a nice spot. corner park. Though. Yeah. It could take two benches. It could take more <laughs> than somebody two. else wants to put one in there. <laughs> Uh, select that Riddell. Okay, fine. Have and just so in, in the interest of public information, immediately uh, uh, post the uh, commitments of uh, this meeting, we will be entering into a non-public session under 91 Alpha colon 3 uh, for personnel matter. Uh, a motion to adjourn? So I move. also move at whatever hundred hours uh, my marine expert says <laughs> it is. Mr. Welsh says 1843. <laughs> Second. 1940. All in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Any Yours. Okay, par pardon me. Okay. Okay. Um, Go ahead. I'll move to enter the non public session. Can I just talk to Mr. Walsh one time before you guys start? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what. Look, can, can we just make this motion? Go ahead. Talk to Mr. Walsh. We're going to adjourn for a couple minutes. Oh, we just. We've adjourned.